I'm in love with too. So this is, it's been really fun. All right, we're live now. Thank you everyone for watching here. Welcome to another episode of Keto Chat. I am your host, Carol Freeman. I am a board certified ketogenic nutrition specialist and I am in the epicenter here in the Seattle, Washington area. And we're all social distancing here uh, and bringing you something to offset all the doom and gloom and the anxiety and overwhelm that's out there. We're bringing you positivity, you guys. Um, tonight's episode is gonna be about, gosh, how do we take this time to actually look inside and use it for a time of self-improvement, honing our skills, improving ourselves, rather than just give it up and land on that couch over there for like my cats do all day long. So um, I coach people. I'm going to start out and tell you who I am. And then I'm going to tell you about our amazing guests we have. One of the nice things about what's going on in the world right now is that everybody's unbooked. And so I have all the best talent in the entire world at my fingertips. Well, then we have Derek here too. So, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I have all the great talent, so I'm really excited to bring the guests or tell you who we've got here tonight. Um, but let me just really quickly tell you about myself, uh, Carol Freeman, and I primarily work with women, a few men once in a while, but um, I specialize in helping people feel, figure out this lifelong struggle they've had with their weight, be able to follow a ketogenic diet as a lifelong sustainable solution where they can lose the weight, keep it off and just move their obsession with weight and food into the back of their mind. So uh, that is me. Let me just really briefly, I'm going to tell you our guests and then I'm going to bring each of them up. They're going to spend about 10 to 15 minutes sharing their area of expertise with you and lead you through some exercises to help you uh, find your zone of uh, skill and self-improvement and uh, all that stuff. So um, I'm going to introduce you all in the order that we're going to go. I know I didn't even tell you guys that. So um, <clears throat> we have Tiana Kelly. And the way I learned how to pronounce her name correctly is it rhymes with Diana. So Tiana Kelly, welcome. Uh, let me just... Uh, so I'm actually going to read your full bio right before I introduce you. So uh, it'll be a, in suspense. Uh, and then we have Kelly Track. So we have Tiana Kelly, Kelly Track. And Derek is out of order. So I don't know. We should have had Track Wolf or something. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Kelly. I'm always curious. <laughs> and then Derek will wrap up with you. Uh, Derek Wolf is in the Seattle area as well. Thank you all for taking the time out of your busy days and lives to be here with us. Um, so actually, uh, and those of you that are watching, if you have any questions for our experts, please uh, type them in the comments box here. I'm going to have to bring up a couple of our um, chats in our groups because we're actually live on my page and well in a group tonight. So it's very complicated. Hopefully you all can see us and chat with us here. Um, all right. So up first, let me, my, my let's see, my privilege to bring to the stage. Uh, here I am pretending I'm in comedy again. Um, <clears throat> oh, up first, we have Tiana Kelly, a coach who helps women break the cycle of trauma in their families by putting themselves higher on their own lists. And she's developed a unique assessment system called the 12 Hearts Prism. I can't wait to learn about this. And I got to tell you, Tiana, um, so many of my clients are in that box of putting everyone else first in their lives and they put themselves last. And so I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for being here and welcome. Thank you for having me, uh, considering I met you on Friday yeah. <laughs> um, through social distancing, Zoom call. Yes. It was very fun. Um, and so, yes, I developed this uh, unique assessment to help women because I used to be a doula, a birth and postpartum doula. Mm. And uh, what I realized is that so many of us who are moms put ourselves way down on the priority list. And that extends past the first year of life when we have babies that that just continues on and on and on. So. Uh, I wanted to use my skills. Uh, I also got a master's degree while I was a doula. And so I've taken the skills that I gained from my doula life and uh, getting my master's in strategic communication to become um, more, more well-rounded to help moms beyond the first year. And I've also used my own resiliency and overcoming uh, trauma as a child and as an adult. So I just, I've mashed everything together to create this new thing. 
Oh, I love it. I love um, it. So I'm going to just, I hope everyone can see this. This is, these are the 12 heart prisms. This originated from, I developed my own logo, which is this heart. And then I turned each heart prism into its own <clears throat> thing, <laughs> for a lack of a better word. Uh, well, it's for own... those of you that are women right now that can totally resonate with Tiana's, uh, you know, putting everyone else first before you, just give us a yes in the, the comments here because <clears throat> I know this is a common one. So give me an amen. Ladies. Yeah, there you go. That's even better. <laughs> um, so the 12 heart prisms, I know I kind of flashed that up quickly and it was hard to read. So I'll read through them. Um, we have your village, self-awareness, your willingness to succeed and your willingness to fail, resiliency, goals and dreams, renewal, accountability, honesty, your history, the infrastructure of your life, what does that look like, and your passion. So the goal, I take women through this either as our first session in coaching, or I also offer this as a class, a group class, and I offer those pretty much monthly. And we just spend time going through each one on a one to 10 scale. And um, and you get to color in, everybody gets their own blank heart and you get to color it in. And it's really fascinating because everybody gets to see what's going really well in their life and where they also need to improve. And the goal is never to have a completely full heart because it's just not realistic. Mm. And what I've come to realize, is it okay if I say a bad word? Um, <clears throat> well, which one? <laughs> Okay, I won't, I won't say it. What I've discovered is we're that... Doing, so we're PG-13, so you're allowed one F word per episode. Oh, no, it's uh, the SH word. Okay, yes, 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 okay. that's fine. <laughs> okay. Balance, you know, we're all told about balance, work-life balance. Mm. Balance is bullshit, ladies. Okay. Can I get okay. an amen? Yes, yes, there we go. Because <laughs> we are taught and told by society that we're supposed to have this perfect home life, be a perfect mom and put the kids first and do all these things. And then we're also supposed to have a career and then we're made to feel like crap when we don't achieve that. So don't forget to take time for self care. Society is gaslighting us. Yeah. So I'm here to help you figure out where you can put yourself first and and so renewal, you notice that my prism is not self-care, it's renewal because you have to constantly be filling your own cup because you can't serve anyone else from an empty cup. You can't fill anybody else up. So renewal is some, you know, things like getting enough sleep, eating well, um, doing things that you love. Like for me, I love to tap dance. So fun things like that. Um, but just taking really good care of yourself. Do you have a morning routine? Do you have a nighttime routine? Like it's not all bubble baths and pedicures. So let's, and especially right now when we can't go out and do those things that we love and we have to find what we love at home. Mm. Right. And how do we fill our cups when we're feeling isolated or maybe we're feeling a little trapped? Anybody feeling trapped right now in their house? Almost. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that is what I do. And so I would love to answer any questions or, um, you know, just, hear what anybody else has to say about their, um, I'm just, can you give a shout out to John? He is our uh, original viewer. He, I think he's been here almost every night of this broadcast so far. And this is the fifth night in a row. <clears throat> so, John, thank you so much. If I could give you some kind of a, I don't know, a star or a crown or something like that for a supporter. A top fan. Yeah, top fan. Thank you, John, for being here. 
Um, and so he's he's doing his dumbbell curls. One of our episodes on Saturday was about how to stay active at this time. So he's being active and still watching the show. So thank you so much, nice. John. Um, <clears throat> um, so for those viewers, please share uh, any questions you've got for Tiana in the comments. And in the meantime, I'm actually going to challenge our other guests here to uh, ask a question of Tiana. Yeah. I would love to answer any questions. Another um, popular thing that we're dealing with right now, as far as the heart prisms go, are, is our village. And mm. how do we connect with our village and feel that support from one another when, when we are isolated? Because I'm a big believer that we are not meant to do this thing called life on our own. We need to have other people supporting us. So how do we do that when, um, when we have to keep our distance from one another? So if you are struggling with a village right now and how to stay connected, uh, I would really encourage you to jump on some Zoom or FaceTime or something. These video conference tools that we have are so great. And I've been on Zoom more in the last week than I have maybe in all of very uh, combined. I think it's been really awesome. Anybody else using Zoom or FaceTime or any of those other platforms that to get through this? Yeah, I think we did a uh, yesterday. We did my girlfriend's dad. We did like a. 12 way FaceTime thing and it was it was really odd it was really interesting yeah because then eventually yeah. the dogs came in and then they took over the whole thing so that's really about <laughs> what I saw somebody one of my friends yesterday or over the weekend did a zoom engagement party for her brother oh yeah so you know life looks different but life goes on and we're getting creative and figuring out how to still connect in this time. And I think for me, at least I'm connecting with more people during this time than I normally would. Like, like I said, Carol and I met on Friday in a group zoom through a mutual friend. It was a lunch, it was a lunch meeting on zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got six people watching right now. So I'm challenging there. We need some questions from those of you that are watching. So, um, what questions do you have for Tiana right now in this time of how do, how do we take care of ourselves? How do we, how do we deal with this like pseudo thing we're told or it's life balance? Uh, what, so here, I, here's a question for those of you watching, what are you struggling with right now with overwhelm? What are all the things that you're trying to, uh, balance and juggle in your life? Um, that you need some more guidance on how do you how do you manage all this? How do you how do you juggle everything you're to so share with us? Dump out your overwhelm. What is it that you're dealing with? Um, Kelly, do you have a question for Tiana? Yeah. Oh, first and foremost, I love what you shared about renewal versus self care. I thought that was a beautiful and very eloquent way of describing it because I I feel okay. like I've never really resonated with the word self care, but I love the concept of renewal. I would, I would ask, my question for you would be around village, because I feel like yeah. village, especially in the world of today, everything being so digital and with Instagram, it's like we're more connected than ever, but you know, quite often I sometimes feel more lonely than ever. Sure. Um, so do you have any tips on you know, improving that village aspect of your life when you feel like you're kind of getting this like false community from you know, online and social media versus sort of in the, the day, you kind of feel like your cup's not really filled up because you never really like hanging out with people in person. Do you have any tips on balancing that in sort of today's like modern techie world? Yes. And my best tip is to call your girlfriends <laughs> because I, <clears throat> I was in a really dark place a few years ago and, um, and I'm an extrovert. So I need that social connection. Um, so I, have to make a point to like make appointments with my friends and call them just like I would call them in high school. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. It's so true. You know, like, especially like even like making an appointment, that's such a good 
idea because you know is in high school it was like impromptu call or yeah. just like oh hey but i feel like everybody now it's like i feel like it's not okay to just do an impromptu call like i'm always messaging my friends like oh hey are you free at like seven o'clock tonight and like get it in the calendar and it's like yeah. in high school we just pick up the phone and call your best friend but today was so much going on especially you know going back to what you said of like you know life work balance and just us struggling with like more things than ever you gotta like really get that time in the calendar so yeah i love that yeah. tip yeah. I, and that's been really key for me, but, and I will, I will tell people like schedule a half an hour to an hour because that's the time it takes for both of you to get the time you need to like debrief and mm -hmm. share what's going on in your life and get that voice connection because this is not the same as hearing people. So yeah. that's my big, my big tip. Derek, did you have a question? Yeah, um, I guess, uh, I mean, one thing you brought up earlier about uh, just keeping like a schedule and stuff in the morning and the afternoon and stuff and, and uh, someone from do that does work from home multiple days a week, like that is something I have an issue with, uh, just mm -hmm. keeping up. Do you have any tips on, you know, how to motivate yourself to, to just continue doing that? And yeah, so for me, it's, uh, it's kind of easy because I have eight and a half year old twins. So yeah. <laughs> keeping, keeping on a schedule, it has been easy, but now it's getting a little harder that they're home. Yeah. Um, but I really like to start my day with a little meditation and just get myself grounded. But like, really, the biggest thing for me is I have to shower first thing in the morning, because that sets me up like that ensures that I'm getting dressed. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to work in my pajamas. I'm not going <laughs> to like have a long coffee. You know, I'm going to just get up and get to it and um, drink my coffee while I'm working. But just having, I know a lot of people like to like sit down at a notebook and do a little journaling or gratitude practice, um, things like that. But just find things that resonate with you. You can Google morning routine and you'll get a million ideas for things that might resonate with you. But I would say keep it to like five specific things or less and before you start your work day and then and just do those things and and do them consistently for 90 days and that will create mm -hmm. your habit. Great. I love that. Yeah, I was just I did a podcast episode yes or th earlier this week and I was saying the exact same thing of like, you know, self-care is like, you know, just like having that moment of just taking the shower and getting out of your pajamas and like it changes that flick in your brain to yeah. be like even just because like there's days when i'll be like oh, i'll just you know do this now it's fine i'm in my pajamas but when you actually have a shower and you like like what you said have the coffee like at your desk and do the work it's like oh i'm really working this is real and like you're taking better care of yourself so i love that yeah thanks that's something i've had to uh, adjust recently uh tiana is it so it used to be that i would work from home all day i've been doing that for years and i wouldn't shower um, I get to work in my PJs, my comfortable clothes as well. Anyways. Um, but I would, because I would go out every night and do comedy and I was going to be on a stage, I would shower and do hair and makeup before that. So that was yeah. my, like, oh, I got to get ready by then, but there's no more of that. We're, we're not leaving. There's no yeah. more comedy. We can't do any of that. And I've had to shift because it's like, okay, so doing this show is one of the things that's helped me. Like, this is a, a hard appointment I've got. I need to be presentable on camera mm -hmm. for that. Um, but I was talking with a friend yesterday where she says, you know, showering is the first thing she does every morning. I'm like, I normally don't do that because it was the last thing I would do. And I realized, I think I need to change my routine and have that as the first thing I do, which sets the tone because things are so different now. And yeah. I'm not ever going to be, I mean, if I leave the house, it's because I got to go get groceries or something, but it's not like, I don't, you know, you can do that in your, your slippers or whatever. So I'm really reassessing. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's <laughs> funny. Uh, uh, no, but it's but it's really having me reassess just for mental health and and like yeah. setting the stage of, you know, if I don't take it in the morning, when is the time I need to take it? Because I don't, I'm not seeing anybody that's gonna smell me. I live by myself. <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you, Carol, for sure. Yeah, like, well, I don't want to smell bad when I'm gonna go see these other people, but uh, yeah. I can. I can fake from here up that I've had a shower when I really haven't. So, <laughs> and, and that's yeah. true. so I'm reassessing that. It's like, I need that for my mental health and just to set a routine. So I'm now switching to like, 
Okay, I'm going to take a shower first thing in the morning, even though it was something I did later because there's not going to be any reason to do it. So making it part of my morning routine is is yeah, what I'm switching up to. So yeah, it's it's good that you're making that connection though, and that's a good step because for some people they're probably not making that connection yet, and. And, you know, because this is still all really new, this whole being at home all the time and what is the change to the routine. So the earlier that you can make that assessment and adjust your routines to match your new reality, it will make all of this feel more normal and more doable and make you more successful when you come out the other side. And that's the whole resiliency piece, right? Like we don't want people falling into depression and anxiety about all of this. We want that resiliency muscle to be built up and firing strong through all of this. So when things do go back to normal, then we just go back to the way it was and, you know, as close to that as possible and, and just move on. Like, you know, and we've all survived it and we can high five again and, Mm -hmm. and we'll all be okay. Yeah, how many of you watching right now can identify with this, like your routine is changing, you're having to create a new routine. So uh, Tiana likes the amen, so let's, so you know this is for her, for her <laughs> in the comments right now. So um, I've been really focusing on helping women through this whole homeschooling thing mm-hmm. right now. Like I've been going live every day um, on my business page, Purple Horizons, because we're, I'm calling us the reluctant homeschoolers. <laughs> We didn't want to be in this boat, but here we are. And how yeah. do we get through it? Yeah. John's given an amen. So, John, well, so John, as you're one of our foundational uh, fans here, top fans, uh, you know, what's changed about your routine? So share a little bit with that is in the comments there. Um, so one of the reasons I'm being really mindful of this myself is um, – I'm an extrovert and I also know that, you know, not only is like a love language I have touched, but it's also like it's a human need that we have to touch other humans. Mm -hmm. Um, We have psychology studies from the 20s and 30s that show that touching other humans is an essential for just mental well-being. And I live by myself. I'm a single lady. I got two cats and I got to tell you as much as I want to, you know, snuggle my cats, it's not the same as human contact. And so for my own mental well-being, I've been concerned, and that's part of why I'm being very conscientious about. Okay, so I've I've gone a week now without touching another human being, and our our governor here just mandated that we not go out and not touch anybody for at least two more weeks. So okay, so three weeks I'm going to go without any human contact. So I'm I'm going to double down and be very conscientious. Okay, showering first thing in the morning might be the first thing I do to create this routine and, and make myself, uh, <laughs> make myself mentally well, but you know, so we've, we've yeah. got all the things. Go, uh, yeah. So Finding that, those substitutes is going to be really important for a lot of people because yeah. we do need those physical interactions. And, you know, I, I consider myself lucky that I am in a house with three other people as an extrovert that, I, you know, it's okay for me to still hug my kids and kiss my husband. And <laughs> um, so. I'm just afraid that about about a week and a half from now, I'm just going to go in the grocery store and I'm just going to go and like hug a clerk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like you know, they're going to arrest me for assault or something like that. I was like, no, I mean it. It was essential. It was essential touch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move on so that Kelly gets a chance. So Tiana, thank you so much. Any yeah, of you watching you. right now, any other questions for Tiana, please continue to post those in our um, the comments here. Um, but up next, oh my gosh, let me pull up her bio. Um, so Kelly Track is a business coach, podcaster, and online course educator. She helps visionary women build digital biz- digital business and one-to-one services and online courses. So uh, I know she's got a really great exercise she's going to lead us through, and I can't wait to have her up next. So welcome, Kelly. Hello. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for having me here, Carol. So my name is Kelly Track, and I help visionary women build digital businesses, um, and it's based on their zone of genius. And I help them build up a business with one-on-one services and online courses um, up to 
place of consistent full-time income, which I define as like consistent five key months and 10 key months from your business. Um, but the thing that I kind of stumbled upon kind of accidentally through my work doing this business for the last three years is um, the, the zone of genius work and figuring out what is that gift that you have that makes you so unique and how can you sell that? How can you offer that? How can you create a service around that? So I'm going to be walking you through to today of talking about what exactly is your genius? Why is it important and how to find that genius of yours? And whether you build a career around that or a business or a side hustle, you can take in any direction you like. Um, so yeah, it's not just business focused. Don't worry if you have a regular job. <laughs> um, but yes, so we're going to, I want to kind of begin by explaining how I even got into the genius work and understanding what this is, because, you know, back in the day, I always kind of, when people ask me about what my story was, I kind of rewind to high school. Cause I, I feel like, you know, it just shows so much about me. You know, I was like your classic overachiever. I did all the things I wanted to be great at school and have all these extracurriculars. I worked my butt off. I went to school um, here in British Columbia in, in Canada on scholarship. I graduated on the Dean's list, did every single thing, tried to get all the job offers. Um, after business school was done, I moved down to San Francisco to work on my first tech startup. And I always had wanted to build like the biggest, hardest stuff. And I was always chasing these huge challenges. Um, tech startup one failed. I tried again, tech startup two failed. And I tried a third time and tech startup three failed. So I had to move back home to Canada and I had a rock bottom aha moment. And I asked myself, what if I just did what I was good at? And this was a very life changing question for me because I never just did what I was good at because I thought that was too easy and stupid because I was always busy trying to you know, prove and strive and effort and hustle and achieve. And the irony was that I was trying harder and harder and these businesses were just not working out. So I ended up building a fourth business, which is this one, um, based on the things that came naturally to me. And I turned it into a six figure business. Um, but it was kind of all like ironic because I was like, how am I just doing what's easy to me and natural to me? And it's working when, you know, all my life I've kind of really hustled and worked hard. And that's when I started to sort of peel back the layers and sort of see where my genius was and how I was indirectly harnessing it. And I kind of reverse engineered it to figure out, you know, how to find your genius and what I call the genius framework. So let me know in the chat, type yes, if you agree, if you agree with that story of learning to hustle, grind, be great at all the things, be well-rounded, you know, improve your weaknesses. So the term zone of genius originally comes from a dude named Gay Hendricks who wrote the book, The Big Leap. Um, and he kind of explains that we have these different pockets of life where we're where we're either you know just okay at it, or maybe we're really good at it, and then we have our zone of genius, where we're truly exceptional, and it's where we thrive, and it's the things that we do really innately, really well. So that's like his concept, and that's sort of the working definition that a lot of us know. The way I describe genius is a little bit differently, and what I describe in my genius framework is just a little bit tweaked based on sort of what I've seen for myself and in my clients' lives. So. I want to actually start by talking about the difference between our genius and these things we're really great at versus just a traditional strength, because I think those words get mixed up a lot. So when we do a, a, an assessment like a strengths finder or learning about what our strengths are, let me know in the chat if you've ever done one of those type yes. <laughs> um, usually we get a list of all the things we're great at, but usually we've been, you know, been taught to be well-rounded and we're, we're good at many things. But I, I like to look at like our top, you know, three to five gifts. I call them gifts versus strength because you know on a list of things that we're good at and the things we have strengths around you know at the bottom of my list like i'm still good at being a you know decisive fast decision maker but i'm not like anywhere close to like you know the speed of somebody like in the army or like somebody who works in a like super high pressure job like you know a, a surgeon making like a life or death choice but at the top you know think about something oh hello from ontario <laughs> um you know, at the top this person's name, because this is when they share in the group, for some reason, um, we can't pull their name through. So I'll go find their name here. So keep going. Keep cool. going, Kelly. Hello, Ontario person. I'm going to get your name here in a moment. <laughs> so at the top, um, the top of your strengths list is like, I always look at the top stuff you're really excellent at and call those your gifts. And I, I like to call it gifts because it's stuff you're really, truly gifted at. Like out of everything that you're, you know, really good at to like super excellent at like what are you like truly truly gifted at and i have some questions for you to figure out what you're truly gifted at um but if you take your top three to five gifts and you figure out what those those are and you stick them together and then you figure out um and look at what those are and then look at activities where you do all three to five where you're harnessing three to five months 
I believe that creates your genius. So I know for me through doing the work, um, my, my four things, the best things that I'm truly gifted at is teaching, speaking, creating, and connecting. And when I do things that involve all four, I create a product that is truly exceptional. And it's something that is, it's truly like my best and highest output. So, you know, why is it so important to find your genius and find this area for you? Well, first and foremost, when you do work that's in alignment with it, you feel super fulfilled. Like it's truly work that you love doing. It comes easy to you. You know, it's that it's that quality of work where it feels effortless. And, you know, people are like, wow, this is so great. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's so easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, another great part about doing this work is that um, when you find it and when you tap into it, you become seen as the thought leader in your space, as the go-to expert in your field or in your career. You know, it's if we can even think about it, when we visualize people that we admire at work or, you know, in the entrepreneurship space who are just so good at what they do. Um, and that's because they're tapped into that genius. You can also, you know, be in that space. And you when you're doing it, you can really charge what you're worth, either in an entrepreneurial sense, what you're charging for in your business, for maybe your consulting or your courses or your coaching or, you know, in a job in a nine to five. You can really ask for the salary you desire because you're so truly gifted at this and you're doing the work that's in your genius. So. That's the value of of finding finding your genius and and honoring it and building it like a life and a career and a business um, or a side hustle around it. So I have some questions for you guys. We're going to whip through them pretty quickly, but you're going to get the general gist of, of the flavor of questions. So those um, of you watching right now, answer Kelly's questions in the comments. Yes. Yeah. And our goal is to figure out what your, your gifts are. We want to find those best gifts of yours. And then we, I would encourage you in a journal to write those down. And then from there, we look at, okay, what, what activities do you do where you're harnessing all of these at once? And how do they create a really amazing by, like final product? So my first question for you is, what are you good at that nobody taught you how to do? I think this is such an illuminating and eye-opening question because we have those skills that we just like know how to do. Nobody taught us. We didn't maybe take a training or a class, but we're just like good at it. Um, I know for me, I'm very good at just making things and creating stuff. And I never have taken a class in like web design or graphic design or anything, but I can make make anything out of anything. And I'm like, okay, this this is this, you know, this is, this is done. Um, and another great way to look at this is, looking at, you know, what have you been good at for so many years of your life? Like looking back at patterns of consistent hobbies you've had for years, stuff where you really find your flow doing things that you truly enjoy. Like what have you been doing for a long time that maybe you haven't like really taken super seriously, but you've kind of said, oh, this is just a hobby or just this like little thing I do on the side. You know, there, there might be um, a gift inside of that because you love doing it and it comes so easily and naturally for you. John, John says his, uh, the answer to that question is communicating. Okay. Nice. Nice. And you are doing a very good job communicating tonight, John. So <laughs> a genius in action. Another question I have for you is, you know, what things come naturally to you when you see other people struggle, you know, and not from a sense of an egotistical sense of like, oh, I'm better than you, but where you can notice, you know, other people doing, doing something and you think, oh my goodness, they're actually having a really hard time with that. I know for me in business school, we had a class. On public speaking and i remember thinking oh this is easy this is an easy a you show up and you talk how hard is it but some people were like really sweating and having a hard time and I, that was the first time i realized oh maybe i'm better at this than i give myself credit for so think of scenarios like that in your life um another question is you know where do you lose track of time this is kind of taps into the concept of flow um and when we find our flow is usually also where we find our gifts and our genius so really think about the stuff you could do forever i like to ask the more probing question of if you had a spare weekend or a spare sunday all to yourself what would you do to fill that time um and there might be some activities you do or things that you do and that underneath have have a gift or a quality which um will be more pronounced. I know for me growing up, like I loved making jewelry. I loved like making any like little crafter things. And that's because I loved creating stuff just out of nothing. So it doesn't, Another, count if I, doesn't count if I lose track of time watching TikTok, right? <laughs> well, maybe there's something in there for you. You know what I mean? Like you're, you always, your gifts, uh, what you kind of enjoy and what you enjoy doing and also the people you respect and admire is also a reflection of your own gifts. So, you know, I love watching TikTok too. And <laughs> One of the things like I've learned through doing a lot of this work is that like um, I feel like I bring a lot of joy to people and I also gravitate towards things that bring me joy. Um, mm. So that's another great question too. like, you know, who are I always like to ask, you know, who are the top five people you admire and why? And if you mm. list out those five reasons why you love them, those are very 
quite frankly, like the gifts inside of you too. Cause it's like what we see in others is really what's in reflection within us. I like um, the entertainment part of it, but I also really admire the people that can dance on there. And I, I can't do that. <laughs> oh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I know they're so good. I've been trying to learn some of those dances and I'm like, oh my God, some of these girls are like expert level dancers yeah. here. Yeah. Another great question is, you know, if money wasn't an option, what would you be doing? Um, and I find this is a great question to figure out some of the gifts that you might have and not really recognize as, as gifts. Because if, you know, if money wasn't an option and you could do anything and get paid for it, what would you be sp spending your time doing? Probably the stuff where you find flow, where it's easy for you, what's simple for you and what you enjoy. Um, another interesting question is kind of around it kind of has to do with shadow and our understanding our shadow, which is the dark side of us. We all have a light and a dark side and the shadow side is the side we usually hide from society and um, stuff we try to actively avoid. Um, and it's usually what we also don't like in others. So it's the same concept of what you judge in others is what you judge in yourself. So it's also very interesting when we think of, you know, what's something we really don't like in other people? And then how is the inverse of that our genius? So I'll give you an example. I really don't like fake people. Like I cannot stand people who are fake or pretentious or really want to have like surface level conversations. And indirectly, you know, something that I'm really gifted at is being my authentic self and showing up as who I am and trying as much as I can to just be.